Um, uh, I'm Sean Askey. I'm the engineering manager for Google Earth. Uh, I'm Gopal. I'm the product manager. And uh, we have some friends from the Earth team in the room with us today. So let's just take a minute to introduce them. Sitting over here on the side and a couple in the back. Hi, I'm Brian Ellis, also sometimes known as Phoenix. Uh, I'm technical lead uh, for engineering on uh, Google Earth for Web and Common Code. And he's being way too humble. He has helped architect this entire product and creation. So you have one of the main men in the room for creation. How long have you been working on Earth? Oh, 12 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm Andy Blank. I've been working on Earth for a little less than one year. Um, <laughs> uh, I work on the renderer, so I'm a graphics nerd down in the guts. Hi, everyone. I'm Lena Raffaelli. I'm a community manager for the Google Earth Education Program, um, and we've been working with educators to uh, use creation tools to make some really cool uh, stories for the classroom. Some of you may know me already, but my name is Raleigh, and um, I am running the Trusted Tester Program for Creation Tools, as well as I teach Google Earth a lot at workshops over the years, so some of you might know me that way. And Raleigh is one of our chief um, user advocates, so when we're designing stuff, she's like, well, all of you guys will may or may not like this, so she's always representing kind of the point of view of this room while we're designing this. And the last person we have, I believe, from Google is Tony, who's sitting there in the corner. And go ahead, Tony. How you doing? I'm Tony, and I'm also a member of Google and working on the... I'm Tony Weber, also a team in Google, um, working with the team in Google and getting these creation tools to you and really looking forward to your feedback. And when he said working with, he meant leading the engineering team. So I guess we have a lot of humble people in the room. Uh, I'm not going to be so humble. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I just talk. Uh, all right, well, let's kick this thing off. Sounds good. Uh, just to note, we're, we're going to be recording this session. Uh, and so we're going to try, if you have questions, to bring the mic over to you so that people can hear it on the recording. Uh, and then the five people that we pointed out are going to be helping uh, during the hands-on portion of the session. So don't be shy. You can raise your hand, ask for help, and we will circulate and try to give you a hand if you need it. All right, um, one thing that uh, I would like all of you to do uh, while I'm talking at some point, is go visit the URL earth.google.com slash web. Uh, in Chrome, um, the support for Firefox and Safari and other browsers is, is coming. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But we recommend you use Chrome for this particular session. Uh, how many of you are users of My Maps? OK. My Maps was the question. Have you worked with that? How about Tour Builder? Okay, that's a good representation. And then Earth Pro, I imagine many of you are familiar with Earth Pro. So part of what inspired uh, this entire project is the suite of those tools. Like this team and this group has always believed in the ability for people to take this canvas of uh, Google's data and use it you know, as a canvas to create on top of. And that has manifested itself in various tools. My Maps, Tour Builder, which allows you to build narratives. And of course, Earth Pro, that was kind of core to what Earth Pro did. And so as we designed the new version of Google Earth, and you heard a little bit about this in the keynote, we wanted to bring that forward and bring the best of those various tools to the new platform. And this is just V1. We know, and you'll hear a lot about the road that we still have ahead of us. And I'm sure there'll be many requests for features as we go through this. But this represented our first attempt to bring some of that together. And that included things like the collaborative back end of my map. So for the first time, you can collaborate on Earth projects and just share a URL with somebody instead of having to share, for example, a KML. And it includes things like being able to build a narrative. So you might have seen our presentation in the keynote. That was an example of how we brought this idea of presentations to the new version of Google Earth. And then, of course, we wanted to bring forward some of the things that were available in Earth Pro to the new version of Google Earth. So if you're still kind of stuck in, not stuck, but you know, using Earth Pro, there are some reasons now you might uh, upgrade because some of that functionality is coming forward. So uh, we're going to go through um, you know, uh, the, a tutorial about all of this, but we want this to be two-way. And what I mean by that is not just that you guys are asking us questions, but you're also telling us what you like about it and what you'd like to see improved. Because again, this is the first time we're sharing this um, with a group. And so we'd like to hear how we can make it better as we go along. So um, of course, we'll be here to help you learn about it, but we'd also like to hear what you'd like from it. 
Sounds good. So I'm going to start off today uh, with uh, a little bit of a demonstration of just creating a, uh, creating a quick project, adding some features to it, giving you a quick flavor for what's possible. Uh, then we're going to take a five minute break, make sure everyone has access, and then we'll start a section where Gopal and I alternate and we're going to kind of step through in a bit more detail um, of creating your first project. Uh, one thing I want to note, we're going to demonstrate on the web version of the new Google Earth here today. Uh, uh, for Android and iOS, you can view stories that are created on the web, but you can't yet author a story directly on the mobile device. Uh, that's something that we want to weigh and evaluate uh, and to get a sense of would that be useful you know, for these types of audiences, for example. So we decided to start with web there. Okay, so um, I'm gonna dive in and just kind of put together a bit of an ad hoc story. Uh, and so uh, for those of you uh, who were unfortunate to see the last time I gave this, we, we had a, a theme and I think the theme was food. Uh, and we ended up in Greece. Uh, so we're gonna do something a little different this time. So I, I need a theme uh, for the story and it could be something about places to go, things to see. Uh, so think about that for a sec. I'm gonna switch mics and then hopefully we get an answer out of one of you. All right, let's make a project. What do we wanna make a project about? Crickets. Squirrels. Literally crickets, what's that? Squirrels. Let's do some squirrels. All right. Uh, challenge accepted. Yeah, I like that you gave Sean a challenge. That All was right. a good one. Uh, that was a good one. The, uh, the uh, caveat that I'll give here is that um, my spelling when other people are watching me type is terrible. So laugh at me all you want. Uh, I won't make too many efforts to correct myself. Okay, so we're going to make a map. Uh, how many people know that we have different species of squirrels here in the U.S.? Does anyone know which is native to the east versus the west coast? Great Wait, are you, where? were you a plant? Did you guys talk about this before? How, yeah. you, how do you have all this species? I, 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 I was a biologist <laughs> in a former life, so. Uh, I know some stuff, but most of it's gone. <laughs> Mammology's been long ago. I, I forget as well, so we're going to look it up, and then we might draw some polygons about where they live and things like that. Please, no, 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 please, get, get a mic over there. This is, you asked for it, you're gonna get it. Squirrels. Oh, really? Go ahead. Okay, the gray squirrel is native to the eastern U.S. and the red squirrel to the western U.S. And the black one is a? The cute little gray ones you see in Haitian? city parks are the eastern. There's an amazing gray. podcast about squirrels that I just listened to. <laughs> You challenged me, and I'm going to give it to you. Uh, I believe it was 99% invisible, I think, but it talks about the design of urban parks and how it led to the spread of squirrels all over the world in great and terrible ways. Awesome podcast. Highly recommend it. Uh, those are awesome. I've, I've held one before. They're really cool. We can fly. Okay, we, we got to get going here. All right. So, or we can just talk about squirrels. Squirrel project, yes. All right, so um, I'm gonna click this little button for uh, the projects panel, the new projects panel, and I'm gonna make a new one. Uh, and we're gonna call it Squirrels Rock. Uh, and this was someone else's idea. Uh, sweet, so I've made a project, it's saved to Google Drive. And as we'll talk about later, you can collaborate with other people on it and I can add goodies to uh, the project. And so uh, for those of you who, uh, other than you, what's your name? Carly. Carly. Who remembers what side of the country red squirrels are native to? Yes. So I, I usually start with the point, but we're just gonna mix it up. Let's start with the polygon. Um, this is a drawing tool menu down here. I can drop a, a point or a place mark on the map, uh, or I can draw, uh, get the, the line uh, or the shape tool. And so I don't know the exact species distribution, the range, but let's just pretend I'm sure they're up uh, in the Rockies. So here we go. Uh, I can title the feature I just made. So uh, red squirrels, notice how I'm copy pasting that because you know I don't wanna put too many R's in there in the wrong spot. Um, and I'm just gonna save this to my project and you'll see that it appears uh, in the list of features. Uh, let's similarly make one for uh, the gray squirrels. Did we mention that uh, the black squirrels are a mutation of the gray squirrels? It's a genetic mutation, they're the same species. Got more squirrel facts coming. All right, 
Um, so here's another one, uh, and this will be uh, gray squirrels. Uh, great. Okay. Um, we should color these appropriately, right? So I'm going to edit the advanced properties of the two polygons that I just made. So red squirrels, I'm going to hit the edit pencil. And uh, I'm going to scroll down, and I want to pick a red border and a red fill. And I'm going to play with the opacity a little bit. So you see there's kind of basic styling options similar to what you have in, in Google Earth Desktop, uh, but we can do more. We can do searches for squirrels. Yeah, sure, sorry. There's, uh... All right, uh, these look like some red squirrels. Um, we allow you to add photos and YouTube videos to each of the features that you add to the map. Uh, and you can create a carousel of these uh, as a way to kind of quickly put together a multimedia presentation. So I'm gonna add a squirrel, super cute. Uh, let's add a squirrel video. That is a great question. All right, uh, I got a video of some squirrels. Sweet, and we'll just add maybe one more. Okay, so I, I've added some multimedia. I love these guys with not enough spaces. Um, let's see what this looks like. Any step along the way, I can preview the presentation uh, and see what I've created. Yay, we got a picture. Uh, and we've got a YouTube video, and I can click on these and basically see them full screen. Uh, we don't yet have attribution, uh, an attribution field for photos, so for now I'd recommend dumping that information into the description box. Uh, it's something that we're looking into doing later. Um, you'll also notice that uh, you know this is a small little whoopsie, small little pop-up balloon. Uh, we'll get into these details later uh, with Gopal, but you can choose a big panel, kind of like the Voyager stories that you may have seen, where it does kind of a, a full takeover on the right side. Um, let's just do one or two more things. I'll drop a point or so, and then uh, now that you'll have a flavor of how awesome squirrels are, we'll get you all set up and then we'll do some hands-on. So I'm gonna exit the preview mode, and uh, let's see, what else would I like to do? I'm gonna set the view. So just like in Google Earth Desktop, you know, we are 3D, not everyone realizes that, so you really wanna tilt. Um, three button mouse is great for this. Uh, you can also uh, control click or shift click command click on your laptops and figure out which ones tilt and rotate the map uh, versus uh, zoom in. So uh, I'm gonna pick a nice view of the west coast and there's a little button here that says capture this view. And that way when I visit this feature or when I present the document in kind of a story mode, it'll fly to this perspective. Uh, last thing I'm gonna do is uh, go to uh, Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, which appears to be outside of the range of the squirrels, but is not true. So we're gonna totally add a big squirrel place mark here. Um, and we're gonna say, yum, I love nuts. All right, uh, we're gonna edit this one as well. Um, and I'm gonna do like maybe a quick icon search for an animal um, that does not look like the paw of a squirrel, but we're gonna pretend. Uh, and we'll dive into these details uh, in a second. So you can see that I've added a place, I can kind of move it around. And, uh, and then I can type some gibberish uh, in here uh, and get a sense of what that looks like. And so here is just a simple balloon, no picture, no videos, but just a title, okay? Um, and so once I've done that, uh, let's say this is my awesome story. This is clearly PhD dissertation material. Uh, I'm defending and I'm gonna present it uh, to all my advisors. And first stop, we're gonna zoom back, check out the range of the red squirrel, check out some really cute videos. And then I can use this table of contents here to either jump forwards and backwards uh, in the linear flow of the narrative, uh, or I can just hit the next button and go spot by spot. So now we're flying to the view uh, of the other polygon that I made um, for the gray squirrel. So anyway, that's just kind of a quick little flavor for what you can do. Um, and we'll talk more about some of the gotchas and caveats as we dive into the details. Um, but any questions so far from the group about what you're seeing here? Okay. Um, and, and again, we'll de talk about this in detail, but you'll have a little drive sharing dialogue. You can collaborate with people on these things. Um, like my maps, it's not real-time collaboration or like Google Docs, you're not gonna see Gopal typing in there while you shared a document with him. Um, we haven't yet added the refresh button. So if you're like sitting next to someone and be like, oh, check it out, you kind of have to reload the page. We're gonna add a refresh button in the app so that you can get fresh edits. Uh, so those, those will eventually be coming. Uh, but just wanted to give that little caveat real quick. So, okay, so uh, any questions from the group? Sweet, so five minute break. Um, please visit this URL, verify that you can see the projects panel 
uh, which should look hopefully something uh, like this once you've created a project, uh, or if you have not, uh, it's going to look like this. Uh, raise your hand if you're having trouble, and think about a fun story you want to tell about your work. Uh, as time allows, I'd love to have a few of you share what you create with me, and then I can embarrass you in front of everyone with your great stories. Okay, Okay. I think most folks are hopefully in good shape. We got a couple folks still finishing up, getting access. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, a little bit slower with you following along. Uh, we're going to go through the steps of creating your first project. We're going to name it uh, and add a couple quick places before diving into some more of the details. Okay. So uh, hopefully, uh, please ensure that you've logged in. You should see the account uh, that you've logged in with in this what we call hamburger menu because it looks like a very boxy hamburger. And uh, you want to click on the projects panel and create yourself a new project. All right, so I will continue my theme as best as I can. Um, you can give it a title and you can give it a description. All right, so uh, I click away from it to finish editing it. I don't eat squirrels, but other animals eat squirrels. Lots of animals probably eat squirrels. All right, um, and uh, I want to add a couple features just to kind of get things flushed out. Uh, I'm going to show you something a little bit different. I'm going to add a place by searching for it instead of just drawing on the map. So the way I'm going to do that right now uh, is I'm going to click on the search box, and I'm going to search for a place. We're going to search for uh, San Francisco, California home of many squirrels. And uh, at this point, I have the option of directly adding the search result to my project. Uh, you'll see there's an add to project button for my search result. You can do the same. And then if I have more than one project or if I want to create a new project at this point, I can do so. But we're going to stick with the squirrels. And I'm just going to hit save. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out is that uh, when you save a search result to a project by default, you get to keep the Google provided information and photos in what we call the knowledge card. Uh, and this thing, you can click on it to go full screen. You can see photos provided by Google. Even this goes like double full screen and you can see some nice pictures and, and facts. So, you know, if, if you find this useful for your project for setting context, giving flavor for a location, great. You can use it, but you might want to customize it. So the way you would do that is you would go in here and edit it. And, uh, and sorry, I'm, I guess I'm stealing a little bit of your thunder from later. But so, uh, you can replace the Google provided information with a plain description uh, yourself. So in this case, uh, I'm going to replace it. And then now I have access to add more squirrel videos and photos uh, and some text. Uh, I can do some great bolding because squirrels love bold uh, and some italics. Uh, and I'm going to leave it at that and leave kind of more details of how to customize a place to Gopal. Um, so now you'll see that uh, instead of having that Google provided information card, I've just got the video I quickly added. Um, let's try the drawing tool really quick. Uh, I'm going to click the point or uh, the pin icon, add place mark icon. And again, I'm going to zoom in. I can right click and drag up and down if you've got a mouse or if you figure out the right key combination for your laptop. And I can drop a point anywhere I want. Uh, and so this looks like the polo field. Uh, in Golden Gate Park. And again, I can save that to the project. And then I want to draw a quick, uh, I'm going to come back to do lines and polygons. So um, super basic, but just again, kind of warming you up, dropping some things on a map. Um, you can navigate this as a map. You can click on it just like it was kind of Earth 7 or My Maps, and you can get the pop-up balloons and fly to those views. Or you can hit the big present button which then will present all of the features in your project in sequence in kind of a, a narrative fashion. We clear the Chrome. Uh, we give you this table of contents, which you can expand and a previous and next button. And then you can step through a story as you go. Um, if you mash on the left and right arrow keys and wonder why it doesn't work yet, it's because it doesn't work yet. Uh, we'll get around to it. So bear with us. You have to use your mouse uh, or touch screen uh, for the time being. Um, and that's it. When I want to exit the present mode, uh, I could hit the back button. Or there's a, re a restart button that takes you back to the beginning if you want to check that out. 
All right, so um, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I want to see what kind of kung fu, squirrel kung fu, Gopal has. Uh, so let's see uh, how that goes. Um, and so we'll switch off to him, and we're going to dive into a bit more details about adding photos and videos uh, and, and playing more with the info boxes, et cetera. Did you want to take a minute for people to try this or just jump in? Yeah, uh, we'll give another minute. Um, if you're looking up at us, uh, I'll assume that you think I'm very good looking and that you're ready to move on. Uh, if you're still feverishly typing away, then we'll give you another minute or two. All right, go, Paul. Take it away. Yeah, great. So uh, I wasn't part of the plant, so I don't know anything about squirrels. What I do know comes from the movie Up. How many people have seen the movie Up? Yes. So anytime I think of squirrels, that's what I think of, are dogs being distracted by squirrels. I have a dog who's very distracted by squirrels. I can't let him off, off leash because of that fact. And I also have a tab in my Gmail called squirrels for all the emails I don't want to answer. So if you send me an email <laughs> and I don't feel like answering it right now, I put it in my squirrels folder. And that's where it lives. So it's good to know. I shouldn't have told these people about that. All right, so uh, we're going to get a little deeper into the property editor now and see how we can customize uh, the uh, properties of the geometry that we're drawing and add some rich media and then change the look of it. So why don't I pick uh, the, uh, ta uh, sorry, the uh, point in uh, Golden Gate Park. And I can click on it. And one of the principles I want you guys to realize about creation tools is there's several ways to do things depending on where you are in the flow. There's several ways to add points. There's several ways to get into the property editor for a point and things like that. And so there, I'm gonna show you two ways you can pop into the property editor. The first thing I did is I clicked on this and I have a little preview card in the upper right. I could click edit and that would take me into the property editor. Anytime you see this pencil, this pencil means edit or customize. Or if I hover over uh, any of the points, I get an edit pencil. I can also delete this point, or I could hide it from my project. And we'll get to those uh, uh, features in a bit. But I'm going to go to Polo Field, and I'm going to click Edit, and it's going to bring in the property editor. And the fields we have here is you can attach rich media and video. That's at the top. You can add a title and a description, and you can use the rich editor to customize that. You can add different size uh, metadata boxes to uh, the... Uh, field. We'll walk through that. You can customize the pin and change the color, and then you can set the view. So that's the, the options in the property editor for a point. So I'm going to zoom in. Let's add again. I'll show you. Oh, one other thing too is when you are in this view, you can grab the pin and drag it. So if you didn't get it exactly where you want, this is one way to edit that. So I'm going to go in here and I'll back out. And we have a few different ways of adding rich media. You can upload a photo directly from your desktop. You can go to Google Image Search, and um, if you're presenting, uh, we'll get to that a little bit later, but there is, um, you need to have license to use this if you're going to use it publicly, so just this does a full Google Image Search. Uh, you can uh, grab YouTube videos and embed them. You can get photos from Google Drive. You can uh, look at your photos from Google Photos, so all the photos that you've stored there, or you can use a URL and copy and paste it, so several ways to get images up there. I'm going to use the Google Image Search option. And uh, let's look up some red squirrels. Sure. Yeah, so if I'm going to be using my photos on Google Photos, how does that impact access controls? So is it going to automatically make my inherent photo public, or is it going to copy that and make that one public? Copy it. Go ahead. Yeah, so we take a copy of it, and we associate that copy with this document. Uh, and so... Uh, when everything's working right, and it should be working now, uh, if you delete the project, the photo should go with it. So you don't have to worry about if, if the underlying photo or album change in some way. Okay, cool. Thanks. I'll also add that if you provide a URL, we do the same thing. We grab a copy of it and we store it so that you don't have to worry about it being hosted in the future. Uh, the catch with that, though, is that if you intended to do that and you wanted the live link to an image, um, it's just going to capture it at the time we download it. Cool. So uh, I'm going to pick this image because this squirrel looks shifty. And I feel for my dog. And so I think he knows the truth about squirrels. Uh, so we have our little shifty squirrel. And what we can do here is we can add up to eight images uh, to any particular point. And so let me add a couple more. And what we'll do is we'll build a carousel. And so I can uh, put both photos and videos into one carousel and mix my media. Um, why don't I do three for now? Uh, this guy looks shifty, too. Wow, they all look shifty. So we got our shifty squirrel um, in polo field. 
And uh, let's add a title and description. One thing I'll, I'll note that we need to um, add to this over time is the ability to reorder this. So if you add photos, add them in the order that you want them. And what you can do as a workaround is uh, you can replace a photo already in line. So if I wanted to change a second photo, I can do that. Um, but right now you can't drag and drop them. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you're adding photos and media. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll add a description about my shifty squirrels. I can't even spell uh, squirrels. That is not even close. Uh, I call my inbox SQ, SK, uh, so I spell it that way. Okay, shifty squirrels. Uh, and I think shifty needs to be italicized. I think squirrels need to be bolded. So I can do my rich media here. I can also change the size of this. And let me just preview this. Let's see how it's coming along. So I'm previewing this, and you'll see it defaults to what we call a small info box. So it's this card that's in the upper right-hand corner, and you'll see that it inherited uh, the edits I made uh, in formatting. But let me go back. I want to edit it some more. And what, the, what I want to do is I actually want to change it into a panel. So I'm going to use this drop-down to choose the large info box, and then I'm going to preview that. And now what you'll see is a panel that slides out from the right. And this um, allows you to add more text. If you had a lot you wanted to write about a particular uh, place, uh, this is the right uh, option for that. So uh, I have my large info box. Now I want to change the color of the uh, pin. And so I have my little crayon box here where I can pick some default colors. Or I can go in and hit custom colors and choose a hex value if I want a very specific color for a very specific point. Um, so I can, I'll just use this GUI and I'll pick uh, kind of this forest green. And uh, again, if I wanted to add custom icons, I can see more icons and we have a list of about 200 icons you can choose from. Uh, these are the same icons you'd find in mind maps. How much is it, Peter? 400. 400. 400. So I was off by a factor of two. Uh, and let's again look up animal. And uh, yeah, we will. Yeah, let's see if we have. It's, it's just a simple text search. It doesn't do, you know, tagging. Those are amazing. Oh, there's absolutely a squirrel icon. Wow, we, we were ready for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, our friend, I don't know if you guys have ever met Stafford. Stafford is the PM for My Maps, and he has single handedly drawn every icon in here as a hobby. And if you, walk around, if you walked around with Stafford at the time he was doing this, any sign he would see, he's like, oh, that'd make a cool icon. And so he'd just be walking around with his scanners on. And so you get this from a passion project from a friend. Uh, so another thing you can do with pins is change the size of them. So I'm going to make this one extra large because these are some fat squirrels. And uh, the other option you'll see in this overflow menu is the ability to upload custom icons. So if you have your own icons and you have your own sort of iconography that you want to use for your story, you have the ability to upload custom icons as well. And the last field I want to show is how you set the view. So Sean alluded to this in his quick overview. But what you can do with this field, and I think this is some of the real power of Google Earth over other creation tools, is I can take this map and make a 3D view. So, you know, uh, Golden Gate Park is a very long park, and if I change the tilt and the heading, I can actually create that perspective, and you can see the uh, length and get a feeling for the playground of these squirrels. And so what I did is I used, it sh I used Shift and my left mouse key to tilt the map, and then uh, we have this button over the map called Capture the View. And if I click that, what you're going to see is are these fields under Set View manually, manually get auto-updated. So let me show you that again. I'm going to shift, and I'm going to maybe take this view now, and watch these values on the left when I hit capture this view. They auto-update. And why I want to point that out is you can control that in two ways. You can either go and uh, capture the view, or you can go in and manually enter these if you really want to have a precise view of a particular place. And so we give you a lot of control about setting uh, how you set up the camera. And so with that, let's take a preview of what we've created. So I have my squirrel uh, media carousel. Uh, I have my title. I have my uh, description. And I have my view. And so if I went to, sit to the first panel and then came back, you'll see that it kept that same view. So why don't we take a minute. I'm sure you're all following along. But go ahead and play a little bit and update your, um, update your stories. And then we'll come back and talk about lines and shapes. All right, lots of chattering like squirrels. Uh, and so <laughs> hopefully you're having fun. Uh, I got a squirrel fact for you 
that I pulled out of my old mammalogy class brain thing. If you come across a squirrel skull in the forest or in nature, how do you know if it's a ground squirrel or a tree squirrel? I really hope this is a joke. It's, it's actually not. <laughs> Okay, so the way you tell it apart, if you can tell that it's a squirrel skull at all, and I don't have help for you on that, because I forgot that part. Um, the orbital bone around the eye sockets of the squirrels, if it's a tree squirrel, it's more vertical in orientation. Uh, and a ground squirrel, it's more horizontal in orientation. No joke. So you can buy me a beer later. All right, um, so I wanted to talk about a couple of the caveats for the functionality that you just saw, and then we're going to add some more. So the first thing I'm going to mention uh, is that uh, we talked about photos. Eight is the limit for now. We'd love feedback on that if you find that limiting, right? We could add more, but we're just playing with what's a sensible place to start. Um, you can't reorder yet. Um, for YouTube videos, we only support YouTube videos as of, uh, as of yet. We might consider other services out there. Again, you know, we, it's, it's, we we'll want you to use whatever works for you, but we also want to make sure that when you make something, it lasts. You know, and so things like Vimeo will be around a long time, right? But like rando website thing might be an issue. Um, another thing is that, uh, and, and maybe specifically for my folks uh, uh, from New Zealand in the back might be interested in this, um, we don't yet support private YouTube videos playing in the boxes. Uh, we got to work out the permissions because those pop-up windows are kind of in a sandbox and things we got to figure out. So an unlisted or a public YouTube video will work. Uh, but if you've got private content and you're trying to keep the whole thing private, uh, that doesn't quite work yet. We've got to figure that out. Um, all right, let's, let's continue. Um, I want to go find a squirrel. I don't think we're going to find it, but we're going to pretend. Um, I want to jump into Street View and add a point in Street View. So how might we do that? Uh, so I'm going to fly down the Golden Gate Park. I'm sure there are a million panos in here, maybe a squirrel hidden somewhere. Um, I can click the Pegman button. And then uh, we get little blue lines that represent where the car has driven and the little blue circles that represent where people like you have uploaded a 360 panel they took with their phone. Um, let's check out whatever's here. Hopefully it's appropriate for adults um, <laughs> or children or whoever's watching this video. Um, all right, nice, this is looking good. Uh, maybe there's a squirrel somewhere. So uh, I've actually been right here before. It's kind of a nice little walk. Uh, let's say I want to show uh, this uh, corral for horses uh, off in the distance. Um, you'll notice that instead of a point or a line drawing tool, there's this little weird you know, place mark with a box around it. Clicking on that, uh, we need to get a tooltip on that, uh, will add this Street View Pano to my story. So horses uh, eat squirrels. I promise. Um, and then just like with the 3D view, uh, I can uh, capture the view. There's a little bug. We're going to fix it. Oh, question. Um, interior street views with uh, squirrel. Uh, I, so I don't think we probably support that yet. You can probably get into the ground floor. You may be able to navigate. And I don't know if there's like up the stairs. Uh, but we don't have UI yet that lets you force us into a particular floor. Great feature request. Uh, we should add that to a list to someone on the team who's not taking notes. Um, that'd be awesome if you could. Uh, yeah, great question. So um, you'll also notice we got a little bug, which is that the attribution uh, information for this user-created pano is, is blocking the button. Uh, fortunately, Andrew Wong's name is short enough that I can still click on it. Uh, we'll try to fix that before launch. Um, so I've set the view. Great. Uh, and just to verify that it works, I'm going to exit out of here. I'm going to exit this photosphere. And hopefully when I click this gory uh, place mark, uh, we'll fly in and see uh, what we want to see. Awesome. All right. Uh, so that, so let's, let's dive into drawing some lines and polygons and learn a little bit more about those features. Um, so we're here at the racetrack where they race squirrels. Uh, and we're going to draw a line around it, uh, starting here at the bleachers. And I'm just clicking. Every time I click, it drops a vertice. Um, unlike Google Earth Pro, you can't just hold the mouse down and whip, out, whip your hand around and kind of like machine gun drop vertices. We may add that. That would be great feedback if that's an important feature. Some people asked for that the other day. 
Uh, but for now, I'm just kind of adding uh, as best as I can. Let's get a little sloppy here. Uh, the racetrack, there we go. Um, when I'm ready to finish the line, I can either hit enter as suggested by the tooltip, or I can just click twice or one more time on the final vertice. Uh, and so this is, uh, whoopsie, I lost it. No, I hit escape. So I'm just gonna make an even worse racetrack for the cheating squirrels. Uh, and then, up oh, detour, great. Race. Okay, um, let's play with the style on this a little bit. Um, so uh, similar to the point feature property editor that you saw Gopal show, uh, I can pick colors, uh, I can play with widths, uh, that looks good. And then, you know, I could also capture the view of this thing if I want. Um, pick a custom color if I'm really into purple today. Fantastic. Let's say I want to modify this line a little bit. Uh, if you drag, click and drag on one of the large vertices uh, icons, you'll drag existing vertices. If you click and drag one of the midpoints, you'll add a new one. And so using this, you can kind of fine tune or adjust uh, your line as you see fit. We don't yet have a feature that allows you to delete a vertice nor add one to continue a line. It's on the list, uh, but we're just kind of starting with the basics for V1. Um, sweet, so that's how you make a quick line. Uh, let's do, <coughs> excuse me, the same for a shape. And so uh, this is gonna be where uh, squirrel soccer happens. Uh, and then, like my maps, it's the same drawing tool for lines and polygons. Uh, Earth Desktop has separate tools for these. Give us feedback if you don't like that either. Um, and you just hover over the first vertice to close the shape. Boom, there we go, edit. Uh, and then I can play with both the fill color and the outline and the thickness uh, and, and tweak it to my liking. So there we go. So now I've got a line uh, and a polygon. Sweet, and, and just like with the line, you can edit the vertices, drag existing ones, uh, et cetera. All right, so uh, I'm gonna give you a few moments to draw a couple polygons and lines, try that out. Uh, and then we'll come back and Gopal will talk a little bit more about a new feature type that we've added to uh, Earth, which is called a slide, which kind of gives you a full screen text or photo that's nice to delineate chapters in a story or sections or really highlight a photo full screen. Okay. All right. Let's go into how we add slides and then I'm going to share how you can collaborate on these projects. So uh, one of the new feature types, so as we've been discussing, uh, I'm gonna go into my project view. I have this present button uh, right here, and that will open us uh, back into a view of our story. And we can step through it uh, using next buttons and go back and forth. We can also step forward by using the table of contents. We can jump straight to a point. And I can also, this map is entirely still interactive. So I can uh, zoom out, move it around, and just click on points. So again, there's several ways to interact with the map, even in presentation mode. And that'll give you some flexibility as you're presenting if you want to zoom in and, and share something. Uh, while I'm here, I do actually want to show one uh, concept that I think is pretty important while you're presenting, which is what do you do with all of these labels that are on the map from Google? So right now we have the ability to control these globally. And so what you do is you go into the settings menu, the main settings menu, you access that through the hamburger menu. Again, what I did is I clicked in the upper left on the three lines, the hamburger menu. That takes me to uh, this menu where I can access settings. I click settings and, um, sorry, map style. map style. I'm gonna come back to settings in a second. I'm confusing two things. I go into here <laughs> and I click map style instead of settings. And from here I can uh, go in and I can control what I see on the map. So if I click clean, you'll see all of the Google provided iconography go away and only your content remain. Exploration is sort of middle of the road. It's about half the content that we have on the map. And if I click everything, everything we know about this place is then represented on the map. And then if I want to go one step deeper, I can pop into custom and I can go in and turn each and every uh, setting on and off. So if I just wanted borders for 
uh, states and countries, I could do that, but I could turn off the borders for localities if that was too much detail. Yes, please. Question. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just wondering, is the scope of these settings local to how it renders on my desktop? Yeah, or is it, so if I send it to someone else, it's not going to propagate? Correct. And, th and this is something that we want to do, is actually have map styles associated with specific projects so that when you share it with somebody, they see it the way you want, to, want them to see it. But for now, it's a global setting local to your machine. And if you do set it and you exit your project, those settings persist. So you have to go back and go back to what you did before your presentation. So we know that's a little bit of a limitation and something that we'd like to kind of make be something you can tie to specific projects. So the other uh, thing I wanted to show you about presentation, which is why I was in the settings menu, is fly to speed. So this is another global setting that you can control and it allows you to control the pace of transitions. So um, let's look at the pace of it uh, by default. So I'll go back into present and you'll see this is the speed the camera is moving. Um, and if I go to another point, it'll fly out. And this is just the default speed that Google Earth sets. But now if I go to that same hamburger menu and I choose settings, at the top, you'll see um, fly animation speed. So I can crank this way up and it'll be really fast or I can crank it down. So I'll do slow so I don't cause any motion sickness here. But now you'll see a much more... Uh, uh, easy approach into this. And what's nice about controlling these things, if you are giving a presentation, this gives you time to kind of add some comments as it's moving from place to place. You can also uh, do uh, flash cuts. So it'll just jump from place to place with no, um, no animation in between. So that option is uh, the first one, turn on fly animation. So if I turn this off, it'll teleport me from place to place. And I think this is useful for other types of presentations. So now you'll see, as I click through, there's no fly animation. It just goes straight to uh, the view. So again, these are global settings, and they will affect whether or not you're in a presentation. So if you set these and you're only setting them for a presentation, you have to go back and reset them after you're done. Again, this is the kind of thing we'd like to be able to tie eventually to the project. So I'm going to go back to just a uh, default um, speed. And I'm going to go back and show a couple more concepts, excuse me, uh, in my uh, project. And so um, what I can do um, is I can change the order of um, the uh, different pieces, stops along my path by just grabbing these two little lines to the left and dragging and dropping. Now let's say I wanted a section break, like I'm giving a presentation and I want to have section breaks throughout. One of the ways you can achieve that is with a new feature called slides. And so in my Add to Project menu, I get a drop-down. And the last option in this drop-down is Full Screen Slide. I'll click that, and it's going to open an editor that looks, should look familiar by now. And I'm going to call this Squirrel Slide. And for now, I'm just going to add a title and choose a color, and then I'll keep customizing it as I go. So uh, we've been using purple, so I'll use this purple background to uh, to make the background for this slide. And I just did preview presentation. And here you can see a full screen slide, which allows you to provide some uh, section breaks. But let's say I actually wanted to add some information to that. Of course, I can add some, some description here. But what I can also do is use this and make this a lot richer by adding rich media to the background of this slide. So I'm going to do another search for a squirrel. And let me pull in this guy right here. and. I'll give it a second to load. And now when I do preview presentation, you'll see that ends up being the background image for my slide. And so then I can have some rich media in between. And what we do is we kind of move the title uh, a little bit off to the corner so the image shines uh, in this view. So that's a little bit about slides. Any questions about slides, reordering, speeds? A quick question. Um I love the Voyager feature. There's the looping, the very short looping video. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that's the same, same same story. That would be a really cool feature to have. It'd be really cool if we gave you an HTML editing box where you could do whatever you want. Good we point. might cover that later. Um, all right. Uh, the, the next thing I want to share is a little bit about how you collaborate. So this is one of the biggest innovations uh, with the new version of Creation Tools and it's the ability to simultaneously edit uh, projects. 
So the way I give access to another uh, participant is this uh, plus icon at the top of my window. I click that and it brings up the familiar sh uh, drive share dialog. And so I'm gonna share this, I guess I'm in Sean's computer, so I'll share it with myself. Um, and this will go straight to my squirrels folder. Crickets, all right. Uh, <laughs> so here is my project. Um, and I can choose if I want um, the person I'm sharing with to be an editor or just a viewer. And so just like Drive, it gives you the option to allow people to collaborate or just to view the content that you're sharing. So in this case, uh, I'm choosing edit and I will send it. And then this will show up in my inbox. I'll click on it and I'll have edit rights to create, uh, to, to modify this project. Um, if I wanted to share a link to this project, I can click this again, and then there's get shareable link. So just, Sean mentioned this earlier, but I just want to reiterate this point. Um, you know, like in Google Docs, there is real time live collaborating. So if somebody else is typing, you can watch them type. This is not quite that sophisticated. In order to see somebody's edits, you just have to reload the page. So you can work on it simultaneously. And Sean and I were actually doing this on Friday as we were prepping our presentation for uh, Monday. He was in the document and editing, and I would refresh it and see what he was creating. So it works pretty well. You just have to take that extra step of hitting uh, refresh. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get a refresh button in there as soon as we can. So, All right, uh, why don't we give you just a minute or two to create a slide, uh, see how it goes. Uh, and then we're going to go on to an advanced concept section talk about some of the fancier things you might be able to do, the HTML, et cetera. Uh, and then as time allows, we'd love to have you all share your creations with me and I can uh, show what you've made. So take a minute or two. Uh, I'll take questions now if you have any. For this first version, uh, the way people can view your content is you share it with them and then they can view it on mobile once uh, the mobile app is available to people with these changes or they can view it on web. We don't yet have a embed solution. So if you wanted to embed a story on your web page or a blog or something, we, we're thinking about that. Uh, looking to the future, we have to wait until Google Earth on web works across all browsers. Currently, it works really well in Chrome, and we are developing technology to make it work well in Firefox, Edge, and Safari. Jesse's working heavily on that. Uh, fingers crossed, maybe at the end of this year, that'll be working well. Uh, you can preview Earth now uh, from those other browsers. Uh, if you visit the URL, there's kind of an opt-in option, and then we tell you, hey, experimental, work in progress. Uh, so feel free to play with it, give us some feedback, but it'll be kind of publicly accessible to everybody, um, hopefully later this year. All right. All right, how many people would like a little more time before we continue? You have 10 seconds, just kidding. Uh, take another 30 seconds, take another minute, raise your hand if you have questions or if you'd like some help. Um, and then we will talk about the last section and hopefully uh, see some of your work. Okay, so I'm gonna continue on and talk about some more advanced uh, functionality and use cases. Uh, and the first thing I wanna show off is uh, some of the ways to do a few more advanced customizations on my features. So you'll notice uh, here I'm editing the uh, the polo field gigantic squirrel icon. And there is a show advanced options button link. And then I get a little more control over that feature. Um, I can turn off the text label. So you'll notice I'll drag this over here, maybe into the water. Um, if, I, if I don't want to have a text label, I can turn it on or off. Uh, I have a few options for tinting the color of the label as well as making that text larger if I so choose. Um, you can also go in here and play a little bit like in Earth Pro with the altitude setting of the point. Um, I don't think we yet do this for lines and polygons. We need to add that soon. Uh, but for example, I could say I want this uh, place mark to be 300 meters above the ground. And then uh, you'll notice as I fly in, it's actually floating above the surface. Um, so that's just an option you have uh, as well. Flying squirrels, yes, delivered unintentionally. Uh, yeah, I just mentioned that, no, uh, it's not a lot of work, we just need to get around to it. Um, like uh, Earth desktop, you can extrude polygons uh, up into the sky and you know lines as well. 
Okay, uh, I want to show a couple other important concepts. Uh, the first of which is a little bit about managing multiple documents uh, and deciding how you want them to show up on the map. So by default, when you open something, when you create something, it shows up in this recent section. It's the only section you see. We'll have more in a second. Um, I've got three different documents open at the same time. And if you'll notice, if I click into the squirrels one, the other ones disappear. Uh, one of the complaints we got with Google Earth Desktop is people load a bunch of KMLs into my places and then like there's too much stuff on the map and ah. So the idea was uh, by default, uh, you can see all of the features on the map for things that are visible. I could of course make them invisible and they would disappear. But for all visible things, you see them at the top level, but when you step into them, everything else goes away to focus your attention on the thing in front of you. Um, but sometimes you want to have things stay on the map at all times. Let's say hypothetically I've got a data layer or a KML. I'll show you how to open one of those in a second. And I want to tell a story about a data set. And that overlay feature isn't yet supported in our content creation tools, but you can load a KML. You could keep that data layer on in the background and then fly around a story and take people to different parts of it. So the way I do that is by pinning. So you'll see that there's this little pin icon. Um, if you quickly make multiple documents for yourself, you can play with this during the playtime. But let's say uh, I'm going to pin the three generations project that we use for our keynote. What you'll notice is that when I step into squirrels, these red place marks in this line from the three generations project stay active. Uh, and they also stay active when I hit the present button. So this way you can load a data set in a different project and then you can present in a Google Earth project collaborative story and still show your data. Um, you can easily unpin that document if you don't want it pinned. So I can just deselect it and it'll do that. Um, other micro notes, um, the recents list uh, does not uh, automatically load the features when you restart Google Earth. So I'm just gonna do a quick refresh and you'll see. Uh, so by default, you'll kind of start off with a clean map. And so within the recent section, you gotta manually turn them back on to see them again. However, if you pin a document, we will retain its visibility, uh, visibility setting in between sessions. Um, and that's just, you know, declutter your map and also give our servers a break so that people don't have 100 things open at the same time. So here you can see that one project did stay visible uh, in between my two sessions. Um, I'm going to uh, show you how to play with KML. So I'm gonna dive in to the squirrels project, sorry, uh, HTML, uh, and uh, we're gonna go to horses eat squirrels or don't eat squirrels. Um, and let's say you've got an HTML5 video that you wanna stick in your, your feature you know, a little JavaScript, you wanna play with it, uh, you can choose this little three dot menu on the description box and say switch to HTML. And similar to what you can do in our desktop, you can jump in here and you can start, you know, making a mess with hopefully some valid HTML. Uh, I, what? Oh yeah, thanks, sorry. See, like I said, valid. Uh, so, you know, you're gonna have to kind of know what you're doing here or like use some HTML editor to figure this out. But um, let's see what that looks like. Hooray, it's just a very simple header uh, that I did in HTML. So if you wanna add images, videos, um, just if you are a web developer and you happen to know, we show you all the balloon content in a sandboxed iframe. That is to protect you from sketchy things that people put into their projects so they don't steal your bank passwords and things like that, right? So that will limit you a little bit. If you try to put a YouTube embed, raw HTML, it's not gonna work because YouTube does not allow these security sandboxed iframes to show videos. And that is the answer for why whenever you see a video, you click it and we pop an unsandboxed window up to show you that video. Uh, you can try, street view embed might work might work, um, so it probably does. So yeah, you should play, but there's there's a good chance it might. Um, okay, uh, so the next thing that I want to show is a little bit about KML, and then we'll leave about 10 minutes uh, for all of you to share your amazing work with me and for me to embarrass you. So um, how many people work with KML in some fashion? Okay, maybe a third to a half. Um, KML is the file format that Google Earth Desktop uses and has always used. Uh, it's a local file, it's kind of like a PDF or Word document. So 
these projects that we've been creating thus far are all online. They're collaborative. Uh, uh, and so, you know, you can access them from anywhere. Um, you know, if you click new project, you can say open from drive, and then we'll show you things that you own, things that have been shared with you, et cetera, right? So here are some of the projects that we've been playing with. Um, CAMEL files, since they're a physical file, uh, you can open it and view it, and we will store it locally, uh, but it doesn't upload it to the cloud automatically for you because we can't uh, enable collaborative editing of just a CAMEL file. It's just kind of a blob of a file. But a lot of people will still want to view them, and we will eventually support importing and converting them to one of these cloud documents that is collaborative, uh, but we need more than just points, lines, and polygons before we can meet a lot of people's needs. A lot of people need folders. A lot of people need uh, image overlays, things of that nature. Um, so by default, uh, we don't enable KML support. Uh, on the web version, it is enabled by default on mobile, but you can enable it by going to the settings, scrolling to the bottom, and flipping that switch. You'll notice that once I've done that, I click new project and I get lots and lots of options now. Uh, one of which is to create a KML file. So you can make a KML and you can use all the same slides and features and polygons and whatever uh, that you saw in a collaborative document. But if you don't want to be putting that stuff on the internet, this is the way you would do it. You would create a KML file. So let me just show you this, uh, local to my computer. Uh, and then I'll go back and you'll see now I have a KML files section. Uh, and so I have a pinned section and I have a KML file section. You can also pin your KMLs if you want. Uh, there'll be a little icon here denoting that it's KML uh, before we launch, uh, hopefully. Hopefully I'm not promising things we haven't done nightly. I'll visit the nightly build. Um, A little, a little subtle hint, and we should probably, yeah, so there's a little tool tip we can cover as well. All right, so, uh, so that's what that is about. Um, if you take that same KML with all these fancy slides and YouTube videos back into Google Earth Desktop, it's not going to do everything because Google Earth Desktop doesn't have all of this functionality. The points, the lines, the polygons, those will be there, but it's a bit of a degraded experience because we don't have support for the image carousels and the full screen and stuff like that. All right, uh, the other options you get are to import a KML file from Drive. Notice that we use the word import and not open. So what that means is, hey, you can put a KML file on Drive, you can go look for it, but we're gonna pull down, download a copy, and keep it locally on this machine. And so if you edit it and make changes, those changes are only going to be uh, on your machine. Uh, and then the last option is to open a local file. So I'm gonna do that one. Uh, and then this is the participant map that I ended up showing uh, during our keynote, uh, which was easier for me to create uh, from a spreadsheet than it was to manually draw all these. Uh, you'll notice that the V1 features uh, for authoring, for creation uh, in Google Earth are a little more geared toward hand creating things. Uh, we're going to look into, you know, better import and, and, and how to deal with larger data sets a bit later. But you can still use other tools to do that, including Earth Desktop, and then pull them in as a KML. Um, and so, yeah, so now you'll see I have two KMLs, and again, I can pin them uh, or unpin them. Uh, if I want to get rid of a KML file, I just delete it. If you delete it, it's gone forever. Um, uh, you know, you're basically dropping the local copy uh, that we have. Um, cloud projects, uh, you can't delete them in the same way because they're in the cloud. Uh, and so uh, we don't provide a trash can here because this is just a list of recent documents that you have. Um, I could clear that if I don't want to see all the recent things that I've been working on. And then I can always go back and open from Drive to find them again. So I'll, I'll pull squirrels back in. Um, were I to delete it from within the project, that actually deletes it in Google Drive. We warn you about that fact, but you can always go into the trash in the Google Drive to restore it. Uh, the last thing I'll show is that if you do want the KML version of a project uh, or a KML that you're locally editing, you can kind of export it. Uh, so you just do that, and then you get a download, and then you've got a local copy. You can bring that back in as a KML file, but it's no longer collaborative, right? Because you've exported it as a just flat KML file. Uh, we'll get around to this conversion of the KML to a cloud project in the future. One in the back. Can we get a mic back there? Hey, Sean. Howdy. Um, 
are you able to um, hide uh, certain items like uh, your place marker and your polygon, your paths when you enter into uh, certain uh, icons? So if you go into one and it has the polygon up, then you go to the other one that hides the polygon and goes into that place marker. Uh, not yet the way you want to do it. Let me explain what you can do, and then we can talk about that. Um, if you hide, unclick the visibility on any of the features in the map, and then you hit present, uh, you'll notice that it doesn't appear in the story, right? That's not what you're asking for, but you know, if something's in draft, you know, or for whatever reason you want to skip it, uh, you can just uncheck uh, that uh, visibility icon. What you're asking for is maybe like a sequential or chronological reveal of the features, right? Uh, we totally want to do that. It's a very common feature request. I think it makes a lot of sense. And so we're going to assess the feasibility of it. And then that way, yeah, each step, maybe then you show. And then either you hide it after you leave that section, or maybe it stays on once you've reached that point in the story. We have to think about how to add these options. You know, eventually I'd love it to be during chapter one, turn this, that, and that on, right? And everything else off. Uh, but we're starting with baby steps and kind of simple functionality. But yeah, that's definitely on our mind. There is something a little bit similar to that that you can do right now, though. Ah, uh, it's a little point. unwieldy, but yeah, Sean already knows what I'm going to say, so I'll let him demo it instead. Yeah, so this is a kind of a advanced feature we didn't talk about. Um, but we allow you to hyperlink text in a pop-up balloon. Uh, you could put a boring URL in there um, and link off to your website or something else. Or uh, we allow you to link to another feature in the same document. And so we give you a list of those features. So let's say squirrel slide. And I want to show the pop-up or that, that slide when this link is clicked in the other feature, right? Um, so let's try that out really quick. I'm going to preview. You'll notice I now have a hyperlink. Whoopsie. Look, I clicked it so fast it worked. Uh, polo field. OK, um, if I click this hyperlink, it will now ta -da, show that other feature, right? Um, so using that same concept, um, there's a show feature on the globe and a hide feature on the globe link. So what you could do, if you want, is you could add a little hyperlink that is effectively going to turn it off. Um, turning off a slide doesn't a slide doesn't appear on the map anyway, so that's not going to be useful. Uh, we're going to do the horses don't eat squirrels one. And what's going to happen is when I preview it, here you can see horses don't eat squirrels. Uh, ooh, I'm going to fix that. Uh, yeah, my bad. I got to fix that. Well, and we have to fix that. All right, uh, let's try this again. I'm going to select horses don't eat squirrels, hide the feature on the globe, OK, preview. Um, and uh, sorry, I'm clicking too fast. When I click this, I would expect this place mark to disappear. Poof. Right? So what you could do is you could turn it off by default, and that way it doesn't appear in the table of contents. And then you could say, during this section, have an on button and an off button. And then you could just do that. Right? So it's a workaround, a little bit more work. Uh, ultimately, we want to do what you suggested, but this is a great way to get halfway there in the meantime. OK, uh, maybe one more question. Uh, can we get a mic? Um, so when you share a document and there are a list of features that you're working on and then there is this one feature that is in the draft but you still want to share that document with others, is there a way that you can hide it from mm. that the other people won't see? Yeah, we, we, we don't support seen? access control on individual features. The access control is on the entire document. Um, you know, you could turn it off, if you will, so it doesn't, but that visibility icon yeah, turns it off on the map. Yeah, um, people can still see it. and They go. can still see it. Yeah. yeah. What, what you will probably want as sort of a workaround is the ability to make a copy of a document. So you could have a master, and then when you're ready to publish it out, you could make a copy, for example. Or, and we got to add this as well, you know, maybe copy this feature and, and paste it in another document. So ways of duplicating documents to achieve that, but I... I I don't think we're going to get into, on a feature-by-feature feature level, don't let other people see this feature yet, if you know what I mean. We'll take it into consideration, but we don't have plans for that at the moment. Uh, other questions? I see some inquisitive faces. They're hungry. OK. Uh, it's embarrassment time. So hopefully, some of you decided to share some things. So I'm going to clean up here. And if all goes well, uh, I will open from Drive, shared with me. And if you see your thing, 
you can throw ooh, throw it out there. All right. Um, epidemia, where are you? <laughs> Striking confidence. We're doing it. I have faith. All right. So uh, can we get a mic back there? Tell us a little bit about what you created. And do you want me to present it or just kind of click around on the map? I guess present. Present. What are we looking at? So Epidemia is the project that I'm working on as a postdoc. And I just put a story together. Is it echoing weird or is that just how I'm hearing? Uh, a little bit, but you're fine. Okay. Go for it. Um, put a story together about uh, where the places I've been and the places of Epidemia and my journey with that. So I started off in South Dakota as a postdoc. We're working with Ethiopia and then the next, uh, the region of Amhara in the northwest of um, Ethiopia. But in the meantime, the U.S. team was moving to University of Oklahoma. And my office is right now in the corner, which is really cool view of Ooh. the parking lot. <laughs> I work with you. Corner office. And with there's the, the street view. Lot. Yay. Nice. Um, Holy cow. We went to Bahadar University to hold a workshop, um, which is the next one, uh, showing where the building was and our picture from it. And then the last one is us chilling at Lake Tana with uh, some of our uh, lab mates and one of our coworkers. Holy uh, cow, this is there. awesome. <laughs> well done. I really like the use of the knowledge cards for like the countries that you still wanted to have some information about so you didn't have to populate it yourself. Use of Street View, awesome. Um, like you, I saw you did some custom styling. Use the panels versus the regular. Like, well done. You, you learned something today. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, let's see who the next lucky victim is. Uh, all right, open, open, open. All right, uh, play video full screen. Well, we'll do good score first because that was there first, and then we'll come back to play video. Are you regretting that? All right, good score. Good score. And you want me to say it? Okay, so we are working on a way to let people understand um, the different factors around their neighborhood that improve or decrease their health. So it, and it's called goodscore.city. Uh, this particular location has a bad score. It, uh, can you go backwards a bit? Uh, uh, it's in actually in the lowest percentiles of natural areas within a kilometer of this location. It's not actually the real location, um, but that was the best we could do. Uh, in terms of, oh, you're zooming along so fast. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, that's fine. I will pay more attention. Go. Natural areas, click. So we Oop. measure natural areas. Yep. We measure, yeah, is that just duplicating? Anyway, it's an awesome thing. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Really nice. Sorry, I didn't understand when you wanted me to go. Nice, nice polygons. All right. No, this is great. Okay, well done, well done. One more clap. This is one thing we got to work on is that uh, the polygons currently get drawn underneath the buildings, which you may want or you may not, and so we got to figure out what we want to do about that. You know, uh, but awesome. Okay, uh, let's see uh, if there's any more coming through. All right. Uh, oh, wow. Lots. Okay. Uh, I'll try to respect uh, the original sequence that they came in. in. Uh, who's play video full screen? Awesome. And look. HTML5 video for the win. Yeah, I was a bit hacking trying to see if JavaScript works and how you put it uh, full screen. And yeah, your colleague uh, Tony showed me how you could cross link. So this info box actually when you press here it actually uh -huh. goes to next uh -huh. slide so there are some tricks hidden yes so it looks simple but it's actually yeah if you dig it or ask questions and yeah you could get some experience where you uh, yeah can make quite impressive presentations so thank you yeah good job Things that we love to do, um, you know, for developer types, like we, I'd love to have a, an API accessible in the balloon, right? Uh, maybe someday, uh, but maybe as a more intermediary step, we want to offer little widgets that allow you to control things in the app. And so imagine 
you know, there's templates offered. So like you want the little window and you want a transparency slider that can change the transparency of an overlay or something, right? So we're th this 3D uh, surface like canvas. Oh, interesting, yeah. So like a hillshade you mean or like a? No, I mean, if you, uh, like I work with Google Earth Engine quite a lot. Ah, uh-huh. Uh, to be able to hack, uh, to get access to this surface as 3D like yes. elements and add custom shaders, whatever, then you could. That'd be incredible. Custom shaders, I know someone you need to talk to. Uh, but yes, and, and there are some ways to start pulling an Earth Engine data now via KML into New Earth. So yeah, we should talk a bit later. Okay, let me try to get uh, to maybe one or two more, um, depending on how many came in. Um, I forget who was the next, so uh, this one. Let me guess. I know what this is. Does anyone else, would you, would you like to explain what this is? Uh, so the project is called My Bibi Hut, and it means my tribal uh, saying for well, where I'm from. Uh, so Bibi Hut, yep, next one. <coughs> so normally they come in sequence. So normally starting with the mountain, you normally have a sacred mountain that you relationship with. Uh, so mountain is the highest peak, so you start from the top. So Maunga Homi is my mountain. Uh, that's a uh, picture of it. Next one. Uh, river. So you're coming down further, that's the Waipawa River, uh, which is from the river mouth where Tūranganui Akiwa Gisborne is on the east coast of the North Island, and coming further on the top, which is where the mountain is. Next one. Uh, Te Aitanga Mahaki is my tribe, and that yellow polygon there is pretty much the area around it. Um, I do acknowledge the other iwi that we overlap. <laughs> um, yes, next one. Yep, that's pretty much the boundary there. There's Poro on the top and Rongofukata and Tawitsi on, on the bottom in the right-hand side. Next one. Uh, one of my ancestral houses is Takipu, and the description is there. Takipu is named to commemorate the laying down of the guns um, with our family during the surrender, during the battle of colonization. Yep. Next one. And one of my latest um, ancestral marae to Wainui marae which was built in 2000 to commemorate our family there and um, my nan they have 16 children yep next one and that's where i live on the sunny side of gisborne and we get the sunrise and it's awesome yep next one and this is the region, Tūranganui Akiwa, um, which I did a little kiosk demo on Monday night, um, explaining why this place is called Tūranganui Akiwa. And on the east coast, North Island, New Zealand, is the first city to see the sun. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks. And, and uh, you know, culturally, you'll use this when you meet new people or you explain where you're from. It's kind of a way of introducing yourself. Right, and then establishing kind of your your background and your heritage. So, amazing. Okay, uh, let's do one more, I guess. Uh, I think there was one more in there. Okay, shared with me. All right, this one: journey of making wooden something. Surfboards, sweet. All right, tell us. Uh, let's get a mic. So uh, my name is Genki Terauchi. I, I come from Japan. I love surfing. And I idea was I wanted to use a combined uh, making surfboard and uh, something. I wanted to use this for my work. And I couldn't end the last slide, but uh, yeah, please go ahead. Back in 2007, I was watching a surf movie. And uh, this is a, a very famous uh, movie scene called uh, Sprout. And uh, uh, a guy was making a wooden surfboard using paulonia wood uh, in, uh, in the noosa head. And I was really shocked I wanted to do something similar uh, like this. And then please go ahead. And I Google it and uh, I look for a guy who's sharing the method of making surfboard. I found this Paul Jensen uh, living in the uh, Washington state. So he helped me, uh, please go ahead, uh, to do a class uh, of uh, wooden surfboard making in 2010. And then this was like uh, how we ended up in five days. And please go ahead. And uh, we also organized a second workshop in my place uh, back in 2014. 
And then this year I was, uh, I defended uh, a PhD in satellite biological oceanography. And then I was, I was uh, happy to go to a road trip to Australia <laughs> <laughs> to see uh, this uh, 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 Tom Wegener that was in the film. So this is a, uh, uh, the, the surfboard that I made during the, the class in the second class in Japan. And then um, that was uh, uh, the road uh, we took uh, during the uh, Australia trip. So back in home, I was, yeah, this, I, I wanted to import KML file, how uh, I did mapping in this. Uh, okay. But uh, recently I've been using wooden surfboard to, uh, to map uh, vegetation of the uh, Nanao Bay. And uh, quite recently I visited him again, making my own style uh, wooden surfboard. And I... Uh, I, I brought the surfboard uh, here, actually, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> to enjoy Santa Cruz. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, all of you who are brave enough to share your work. There's some really compelling stuff, all the custom icons, lines, styling, really cool. Um, we're a little over time, but we're going to be around if you have questions uh, or, or comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.